Hi, I'm Noah, and today I've decided to stop inhaling lead. And tin. Let me explain. Being an electronics enthusiast, I do a lot of soldering. And solder is mainly made of lead and tin, and while there is unleaded solder, I found that I prefer leaded. And obviously, it creates fumes that aren't great for you. So today I'm going to be building a fume extractor to hopefully remove those toxins while I'm soldering and make it a little better and not breathe in metal. So a fume extractor is basically just a small fan with a filter and it sucks the fumes away from the soldering, pushes it through the filter and removes as much of it as possible. My plan is to use an old 120 millimeter uh, desktop computer fan and 3D print an enclosure for it and then use a switch and a potentiometer to control the thing. I have no idea if the potentiometer is going to work or not, but I like the idea of having these overly complicated controls, something that should be really simple, even if they potentially don't work. Here's the CAD model for the frame. I decided to go with a modern-ish design inspired by one of those cheap wire fan covers. I think it looks pretty cool and I'm quite proud of it. The base of the fan has holes for the switch and potentiometer, as well as the words fume be gone, just in case I forget what it's for. I'm going to print this out in white filament and I'm going to try out the ironing setting in Cura, as there are some big flat faces here that I think would be cool to try it on. So after about 30 hours of printing, I had the frame done and ready for assembly. I started out by installing the switch and potentiometer. The potentiometer had this little key to stop it from slipping. I removed this as I didn't want to design around it, and I really don't need the extra strength if I just tighten the nut firmly. I then screwed the fan in, or I attempted to. However, I found that my holes were not quite lined up right, likely down to an issue with me measuring the fan in the first place. As I wanted to avoid needing to reprint this part, I decided to just lengthen the hole into a slot using a drill. It looks a little rough, but it works well enough, and I'd say it's good enough for me. We are going to need a filter if I plan on reducing the amount of fumes in the air even a little bit. Otherwise it's just going to blow them around. I decided to cut up an air filter. This one advertised activated carbon or something like that. And while I don't know what that means, the same marketing buzzword was used on fume extractor packaging. I used four bulldog clips to secure the filter on the rear of the fan. I wanted to make it easy to swap out while maximizing airflow, so I decided on a rear mounted filter that is clipped on from the frame edges. And I'm doing this on my girlfriend's mother's sewing table. And since there's a good chance she's watching, I'm just going to make sure I can include this clip of me cleaning up. I soldered together all the connections, making sure to blow the fumes with my mouse to push them in the other direction. No, seriously, I'm not even kidding. That's what I usually do. This fan really is needed. 
It's all connected such that it will apply a voltage between 0 and 12 volts based on the potentiometer position. It has this DC barrel plug. This is not properly installed as I didn't know I had it. I'd intended on just cutting and soldering the power cable on as I did with the 2020 button, but I found this little doodad and decided to use it to increase the usability of the fan. So here it is finished. I can flip this switch here to turn it on or off, and I can twist the knob to... Yeah, I figured that might not work. Looks like this fan is not controllable by voltage fluctuation. Oh well, the knob still looks super nice, and the red matches the lights on the fan.